we cannot, uh, we, because, sorry, because you cannot come to us, we decided to come to you and we're bringing you our virtual tour of the Soy Dog Foundation and all our infrastructures. So let's start with a little bit of history about Soy Dog. So Soy Dog was established in 2003 by three people. Uh, Margot Hamburg from the Netherlands, uh, which is the one that actually decided on the name Soy Dog, because Soy in Thai, as you might know, means street, and John and Jill Dalley from Leeds in the UK. So basically, the three of them decided to uh, start and help all the stray uh, population of dogs and cats here in the island. At the time, 2003, the population was about 70,000, so really not much they could do even because if you think about it at that time, there were no other facilities or uh, like private shelter or government dog pound that could help. So not really much that they could do. The big change came in 2004, if you remember, after the tsunami boxing day. So many people, particularly from England, decided to send um, money to donate in donation and decided to come here as volunteer, you know. And also from Australia, we had vets sending equipment so they were able to buy a small piece of land, you know, with an old cow shed that has been uh, restructured, which is the actual building at the bottom. You can see the white building. So that was the original soy dog. Just a handful of people working in there. Uh, and it was shelter, it was clinic, it was office, it was everything. Today, we are about 280 people at Soy Dog Foundation. Roughly 210 people working here at the shelter and other 70 people scattered all over uh, the country. You know, Pattaya, Nakompanom, Buriram, uh, Koh Samui, Bangkok. But remember one thing, as shelter, we are only here in Phuket, okay? When you hear about soy dog in Bangkok, that's only for staff. We have mobile units in Bangkok, um, which take care of the stray animals, you know, in, in, uh, in the city, because the stray uh, population in Bangkok is huge, it's between six and 700,000. But as shelter, receiving volunteers only here in Phuket, okay? So everything you see around is possible because of private donation. We don't receive any help from the government. So everything you see around, it's possible because of private people helping us. And if you think, you know, uh, to run soy dog for a month, it just cost uh, a little bit under uh, uh, 1 million US dollars. But even though we are speaking big numbers, remember one thing, the majority of donation comes from small people that donate $10 a month. $10 a month, maybe you think it's not much. It is indeed, because if you think to sterilize and vaccinate an animal, it costs roughly a thousand bucks. So with $10 that you can donate monthly on a regular basis, you can already help a lot our animals, okay? Right, even though we are not one of the biggest foundation in the world, you know, there's foundation with thousands of people. Yes, uh, we are the foundation that does the biggest number of sterilization in the world. Last year, we were just a tiny fraction under the 120,000 sterilization, which means that roughly we are doing uh, about 10,000 sterilization per month, okay? Majority of sterilization actually take place in Bangkok. As I mentioned before, this, the population in Bangkok of stray animals is huge. Nowadays, we are doing an average between six and 7,000 sterilization per month in Bangkok, where we have six mobile units. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we hope to increase the number of our mobile units in Bangkok. And here, which is this, our sterilization unit here in Phuket. Here is where we do between, normally between three and a half to 4,000 sterilization per month. So now there's one details I would like to mention. As I mentioned before, the population of stray animal in 2003 was roughly 70,000, okay? Now, 2020, the population roughly went down to 7,000, which means a decrease of 70, um, of 90%, okay? The majority of sterilization in the past has been of dogs, which means that now the number of dogs is gone down. And as a consequence, we have more cats in the street, which means that now the majority of sterilization we perform, right, is 
cats, okay? So now the majority of sterilization is represented by cats, okay? Right. Here in Phuket, we have two mobile units. Um, our mobile units go around, you know, and we've also mobile unit for dog catcher. They go around, they go and check a specific area for a certain period of time because you know it's not just that you go there and you check who's been sterilized, who's not been sterilized, because once we do the sterilization, we recognize the, st the animals being sterilized because of tattoo on the ear, okay? So once we get there, we have to check the number of animals that still need uh, sterilization, and after the counting has been done, they bring the animals here. So what happens is, mobile units go out in the morning, they come back in the afternoon, they go into the sterilization unit, Every animal, once they get there, before receiving the surgery, have to be checked for contagious disease. Distemper, parvovirus, rabies, okay. So if the animals are positive, they have to go into quarantine. Once the quarantine is over, they get the surgery. If everything is fine, uh, every animal is negative, they can go straight for the surgery. Once the surgery is done, as you can see, we have some kennels at the back, okay. We call them the C units. These kennels are used for dogs uh, after the surgery. So, what happened after the surgery? Okay, that's another subject. After the surgery, depending on the quality of life, the dog stays here or goes back into the street. We have a program called the CNVR. CNVR stands for Catch, Neuter, Vaccinate and Return. So. If a dog has a nice quality of life, okay, he lives in an area where there is no major danger, he's well fed, he's, we have people taking care of him, there is no point for this animal to stay here at the shelter. Because remember one thing, again, because of the actual pandemic going on in the world now, of course, it in Thailand as well, the number of animals is increasing here at the shelter, okay? So now, we, has, we have passed the mark of the 1,100 animal here. Okay, we have roughly just over 850 dogs and just over 250 cats, okay? So again, if the animal has a nice quality of life in the street, they can go back to the street. And this take us to what we call the COP. COP stands for Community Outreach Program, okay? We have our staff going around the island, teaching first aid to local people, and helping them with medication, you know, first aid, and anything that can help having health, uh, healthy dogs, okay? Once the animal is healthy, is well fed, and is happy, it doesn't represent any threat for people. So people and animals, dogs or cats, they can get along in the same spot, okay? Right. Um, so right now, come with me. Follow me and I will take you towards um, another sector of the soy dog. It's gonna be the cattery, right? Our temporary cattery. And then we will meet my colleague Kun Gan, which will take you and show you other facilities here at the shelter. Okay, no, this is not Kun Gan. Okay. So there she is. Now I will pass the microphone to Gian. And thank you very much for listening. And help us, please. Thank you, Sylvia. OK. Hi, my name is Gian. I'm volunteer coordinator. I will start from the Catherine house first. I will show you inside to see our good cat. Most of them very lovely. Yes, and they are very cute. And the first room we're gonna see, you're gonna see the SIV cats. Our SIV cats, we have got about 15 cats in here, right? And yes, in the daytime, it's too hot nowadays. They're always sleeping. And inside two more rooms here, you're gonna see the healthy cats. We have the room number one and number three. Nowadays, we have got the cat about 100 plus in here. But don't worry, we have the good people, we have the good staff to take care of our cats in here. We feed them two times a day, morning and dinner time. And most of them, don't worry, 
day the sex already vaccination complete and yes some of them adopted already but some of them not yet if you interesting on them you can contact our adoption team in local and international as well right and the cat house before we open yeah every monday and friday but if you want to contact our office yes you can do whatever you want by email and after this i will show you to see our dogs at the signs those are our main dogs Our dogs car. We have got the room, nine rooms in this side, and one room we have got the dog about uh, 25, not over 30s, and we mix mix the female and male dog together. But don't worry, everyone be safe. Vaccination complete, and we have the good staff to take care of them as well. Their job like a uh, clean the area <laughs> every day, all day. Yeah, because they always poo and pee sometimes. And we feed them one time a day because those are healthy. We don't feed them too much because we don't get them a little bit fat like this. But don't worry, we have the good people like a volunteer. They take them to walk before every Monday until Friday. They will exercise every day as well. But except for weekends, we don't allow them to walk and no visitor as well. And most of them, we got them before around the street from Phuket area and from Hanga province is near here as well. Those are, it's like a after treatment, we cannot send them back to the same area. The problem, like a no one to take care or some of them still have got some medical anything. But don't worry, we will take care of them all of their life. And if they have got a chance, like a, some adopters, like a international adopters or local adopters, if they're interesting on them, yes, we welcome, you can contact our adoption team, international adoption team and local adoption team. You can contact nowadays by email and we have the good people, good team to access, such as you. We have different kinds of the dogs. Some of them really lovely, love the people, and some of them a little bit shy, but don't worry, we have a good behavior team to take care of them as well, right? And after this, I will talking about dog meat trade in Thailand. It's happened in Thailand more than 10 years, I think, but it's ending on 2014 in Thailand. Before the people like uh, the smuggler do this some uh, business, like uh, stolen the dog, steal the dog, store the dog in the street from the owner, people on everywhere. They just like I uh, have got truck, go around and do some business, like a uh, chain with the plastic bucket or chain anything can get the money and then they put the dog in that dirty cage like that you're gonna see it's too narrow and one time they have got the dog more than 100 dogs in the time and 10 dogs you see inside the narrow cage like that some of them die inside it's really sad but some of them survivor because uh, our government right uh, the police they rescue them after we rescue them, like uh, we opened a shelter in the northeast in Thailand, we call that province like a Purilam province. We opened the shelter by the government, with the government, we hand them soy dog. After the dog, we rescue, we send the team, we have a good team, good vet. We take care of them, vaccination, take a good care. And after this, we have got like a partner rescue. Nowadays, most of them from the dog meat trade. We sent to the partner rescue and some of them got the home already. Forever home is lovely one. And now they in Thailand is stopped it. Because now our government they create the new route. Like we charge them 40,000 baht for charge and two years in the jail. But nowadays we still doing, we promote around in Thailand, in Cambodia, in Vietnam as well. Because most of Thai dogs before we send those Thai dogs to Vietnam and the Vietnam is the biggest country. It's like uh, the big market. They like uh, allowed to eat dog. But in Thailand nowadays, it is illegal. No one cannot do anything like that. And I'm gonna show you to see other side before they were like a dog meat trade. They, but nowadays, they're gone, right? Now we keep the dog from the Kwantanong province. 
Two years ago, in Thailand, the rabies scare, they like an outbreak around in Thailand, but except Phuket, because our soy dog, we vaccination, we control everything, right? But some of the Midland and some of the Northeast in Thailand, they have got some problem, and the people scare, they dump the dog around the street, and the number is so many, and yes, the government, right, God, they try to cause to manage and put the dog in the one area, but the number is so many and they don't have enough the area, they don't have enough vaccination to take care. Yes, soy dog, we sent a good team to take care of them and we brought some 300 dogs we brought from the Kontronum province, we brought into this shelter and some of them nowadays we send to other country like a United States, Canada, right? Go to the partner, let's see. And some of them still in here because some of them is not really good health. Before they came here, they have the skin problem, really slim and have got some surgery after treatment complete. Yes, we take a good care of them nowadays. They are good health, healthy, lovely because we have got the volunteer to take them to walk. And the dog from the Kontonom province, different from dog meat trade, you know, because they used to be have an owner before. Most of them very lovely, don't scare off the people, different from dog meat trade. And it's easier to be adopted by the local people as well. And yes, nowadays we have got the room for DMT, we have got room number one, two, three, four. And the dog in this room is not too many because right because now <laughs> cannot send to other country after everything complete hopefully soon possible soon we can send the dog to forever home okay now for my task is finished already i will send my microphone to my colleague mr Oventa. hello 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 Thank you very much, Gungan. Hello, guys. Welcome to Soy Dog. My name is Owen. I'm a visitor and volunteer coordinator here at the shower. I'm going to be taking you this way to show you the hospital and the other side of the sanctuary. So if you follow me. Okay, just to remember guys, we are coming to you live from the Soy Dog Foundation uh, shelter live in Phuket. So please share, like, comment, uh, tag all your friends and let people know about what we're doing here today. I'm going to be showing you and explaining to you what the lake is all about and also this big building over here, what that is there. So first of all, the lake, as you can see, we have a, a rather large piece of water. This is, we use it as a reservoir. So we use this water um, we, as a part of our Go Green initiative. We use the water around the shelter and we send it for a filter system that makes it nice and clean. So th this is essentially a re re reservoir that fills up with the rainwater that means we can use this water all year round. As you can see around the outside is one of our walking paths. We have many walking paths here at Soy Dog for the volunteers to walk the dogs. Uh, but this is one of the most popular ones because it's so quiet and nice and peaceful. It's nice for the shy dogs to come around and have a, a, nice, a nice walk, a nice getaway uh, that's nice and peaceful. So that's the lake area. Um, very quickly, on this side of me, we have what we call the Walk of Love. Sylvia may have already explained briefly the Walk of Love, but I will go into a bit more detail. So as you can see, there's stars on this Walk of Love that people donate to us. So the supporters that you guys, I guess, and the people all around the world that would like to donate, people can buy these stars for 200 US dollars um, and then essentially put their names, their dog's names, their cat's name onto one of these stars in order for us to try and raise some money. As Sylvia also explained, Everything here is run via donations. We do not get any funding or any grants or anything like that. So things like the, the, the walk of love and the stars is how we can um, keep doing what we're doing here. As Sylvia probably also said, one million US dollars every month is how much it costs to run everything that we do here. That's a lot of money. So please, please, please continue to support us certainly during this hard time. The hospital. So if you follow me, we'll talk about the hospital. Okay, everybody, this building on my left-hand side is the Soy Dog 
dog hospital. I say dog hospital because we do have a separate hospital for the cats, which I will talk to you about afterwards. But firstly, the dog hospital. Now, we built the dog hospital around three years ago, and it cost us 1.7 million US dollars to build. This is state of the art to Asia. There is nothing else in Asia for street dogs like this. It is one of a kind. Why is it one of a kind? Purely because the care and the treatment and the, the, the surgeries that the dogs receive here um, is top of the range care, very similar to the, the, the care you would receive in any country, Western European standards as well. So all of the kennels, they go all the way around the hospital. There's around 170 dogs within the hospital on any given day. More so at this point in time, due to the current economic state, we have a lot of dogs uh, coming in and not so many going out. So the, the hospital is extra full at the, during this time because we, we, we essentially don't have much room to put all of these dogs when they're not leaving, but there's still just as many coming in. Uh, we have stopped dogs leaving or due to the rules and regulations around the world at the moment, not many dogs can leave uh, or no dogs can leave internationally, but dogs of course are still coming in. We will never close our doors for dogs and cats that need our care. Now, why is the hospital so special? What kind of care do the dogs receive in here? So firstly, on this right-hand side, uh, with this big black tank that you're just looking at now, this is our physio unit. In here, we have a hydrotherapy pool and a physio team working with the dogs that have either had amputations or surgeries, or they've got arthritis. They're generally a little bit old. Sometimes it's overweight dogs. In here, they can receive any kind of physiotherapy or hydrotherapy treatment they need to get them mob mobile again and feeling walking around comfortably. As you can hear in the background, we have some very calm music. Uh, the music is two reasons why. Firstly, it keeps the vets nice and calm and it gives them something to listen to whilst they are doing their surgeries. It's also been proven that the dogs do become calmer and will relax when the music is on. So it's a nice classical music on in the background there to keep both dogs and vets calm and comfortable. Now you see all of the dogs are in the kennels. All of these dogs would have been brought in at some point for sterilization and vaccination. And there would have been, we would have realized that there was an extra medical issue with these guys. So they're here now receiving their treatment, their medical care until they are fully fit. And from there, they will either go back to the runs, back to the shelter, or they will go back to their owners. If it's local people, we will allow the local people to bring their pets in if need be. Um, inside the hospital, we have dentists, people working with the dogs and their teeth. We have surgery rooms, we have x-ray rooms, we have all different kinds of operation rooms. We have dog groomers. Now I say dog groomers with quotation marks because it's not groomers as you probably know them. It's groomers working with dog skin as if you've ever been to Thailand or if you've been to soy dogs specifically, you will know there is a lot of dogs here with skin issues. They need that addressing, they need that help. No one likes to have bad skin, the dogs don't either. We need to keep their skin in tip-top condition. Um, and then the front, of the, the front of the hospital, we have the front office team. They are dealing with all the logistics and all the dogs that are coming in and going out. So their job is to make profiles for the dogs and speak to the dog catchers about where these dogs are coming from and the stories behind them, why they ended up here. We're going to take a slow walk around the side of the hospital. Uh, on the other side of the hospital, there's some more kennels that are housing some slightly different dogs. So if you follow me round, As you can see, as you walk around, a lot of these dogs are very cute. Um, but on this end here, these last seven kennels, they're slightly different. This is what we call the mother and maternity unit. So in here, we have the mothers and their pups. On this side, it's just the pups. Uh, for one reason or another, they are here. These dogs still have medical conditions and are in need of medicine and treatment. That's why they're here in the hospital. Um, so, of course, it's really important that we make sure the puppies, because they have such weak and low immune systems, we have to make sure that they are uh, healthy and safe and being kept free of disease. So these puppies will receive their treatment, they'll be fully vaccinated, fully sterilized, and when they're at age, and then from there, they will either go to the puppy run, or they will be found homes for. As you can imagine, the puppies are very popular both locally and internationally, so it's very easy for us to find homes for these puppies. Um, if you have been to the shelter before, you will know that we do have a puppy run for the puppies to live in. So from here, they will go to the puppy run, and if they don't get adopted straight away, they move up the system. You'll hear a little bit about the teenagers in just a moment. So they go from the puppies to the teenagers, and then eventually on to the big dog, the adult dog's main part of the shelter. Okay guys, so a very brief description of the hospital. I hope you're a little bit more informed about the hospital and about what happens at the back of the sanctuary. I'm now going to pass you over to one of my colleagues, 
Yanissa, and she is going to tell you a little bit more about the rest of the, the shelter and the Jill Dally statue. Thank you, Owen. My name is Yanis Ras. I'm one of the volunteer coordinator team. So the, here so I'm going to show you this is the Jill Memorial. So we, uh, Jill Memorial, this is her statue. We got her, mem we got her statue for her 60 years birthday last year. As you know that she's already passed away about three years ago. And so after she passed away, so the, we have her statue here. And I would like to tell everybody to know that for her statue, it's nothing to do with the donation money. It's nothing to do with you guys, money that you give uh, our donation every month. So the, for her statue, is made to order and came a long way from Italy and paid by John Daly, her loving husband. And the... Jill Daly, she won many awards, yeah, and the, the best of one that she won the Asian, she won the Asian of the year in 2008, yeah, and the dog in her arm now is already been adopted and live with her best friend in the UK, and the, you know, by, again, the, she also have the dog named Cola. So she, Cola is very, very famous, and also Cola has lost the paw. And Cola has the prosthetic paw and still alive, live with John uh, in Phuket. Yeah. As you know, also, Jill Dali, she has lost her leg by saving animal life. Yeah. By saving animal life, you know, the, she has very, very bad infection, and uh, she lost her leg. Yeah, so you can imagine that, you know, how people can love animals that much. She doesn't care about herself. All what she cares, she cares about the animal. So, again, that's why the, we put her statue here, why we put her memorial here, because here, so the, she can look out her, the, you know, old stray dog, which is, uh, Sylvia already mentioned, that is our original hospital, which is in front of us here, and on the right hand side, this is our new hospital. I would say this is the one of the children. You know, as you know that uh, you know she has a dream that she would like to have an uh, the hospital. Before we don't have a hospital, so what we did, we have to take the animal that is very serious case. We have to take them to the private hospital, and we spend so so much money. And the money that we spend is all from you guys' money. So that's why she said, no, we must to stop that happen. We must have our own hospital. So we have to help. So that's why everybody help to fulfill her dream. So finally, we got the hospital is ready. You know, in 2017. Yeah, and then the, so her spirit is here, her soul is here, so that she can look out from the from there. She's very happy, and I have to say very very thank you for all the support all over the world. Without your support, we won't have soy dog like today. Yeah, and the, now I'm gonna take you the uh, uh, Philae look Philae look premier cat. So we have it over here. So uh, we have cat, Philae leukemia cat in here, so about 15 cats, and all these, they cannot be adopted. Yeah, and then they still, you know, happy, lovely, and uh, also, you know, uh, among the shelter, so many, many shelter, when they found the cat have an FIV or Philae leukemia, they will put them to sleep. So why is that? Because of the cost to keep them alive is quite a lot, it's very expensive, but for us soy dog, we keep them alive, we keep them alive, and that's why we also, we have to have our sponsorship program, for sponsorship program, that is, the, we create for, you know, for uh, the animal that they cannot be adopted, and also it's good for the people that, you know, they love animal, but again, they allergy, you know, they allergy to the hair, so they live in the small area, or they live in the place that is not allowed animal. So they can be adopted as well. So to adopt a cat is about 19 US dollar a month, which is, is not expensive at all compared to, you know, if you spend money going out. So, and uh, the money that you spend, it will 
you know, if you care for all the animal in the shelter. So that means your 19 US dollar is worth, is very valuable. Yes, so uh, we still need your support. Uh, uh, as you can see now, we are on uh, crisis, but uh, you know, small amount we do or if you cannot do that please helping us to share you know blood buy, buy spread the word and uh, let the people know on the social media that is very very helpful so here that is our teenager dog run so the teenager dogs they are you know they are the, why we call teenagers because they are very lively very energetic so they still you know, the, they're still puppies, I would say. Yeah, they, they also, they're looking for a home. If you're looking for a pet, to have a dog or to have a cat, yeah, they are here for you. They are very the, lively. They can be a good friend. Yeah, okay, we come over here. So now we go passing by the original hospital. So half of that we use for isolation unit and the other half, as I said, we use for the feline leukemia cat. So now uh, we're going toward to the small dog run. So that is one of the thing that we, is one of our main the activity is outcome to our main attention. So we call pup, stop puppy farm. Why is come to our main uh, attention? Because people, you know, now today they don't realize so this problem is the problem all over the world. It's not only in Asia. Why is that? Because people, they don't realize they, are, they go to the shop because they, wa they want to buy the puppy, they want to buy the pet, give to the children, and all those type of animals, they are not really strong. We call puppy meal. Puppy meal, once you have that, you know, and after a few years, you know, they, they're not really strong, and then they get sick very, very, very uh, they get sick and uh, and they're not strong enough. So what happened? They abandon them. So because they don't have money to pay for the treatment, so they abandon them. And so that's why we have so many many small dogs here at the moment. So most of the dog in here they cannot be adopted because they uh, they need the they are they are sick. Yeah, and so to be if. If you uh, would like to have any more, if would you would like to have a pet, please don't go to support a bad business. Don't go to farm, to buy in the farm. Don't go to the shop. If you want to give a present to your children, go to adopt. And don't go to shop. Don't support the business. The people who are earn money, the businessmen, they don't care about what you, what you do after that because they make money, so they're happy. Do not support them. Yeah, if you have your friend would like to have uh, uh, would like to have animal to give to their children or to, would like to have a pet, small dog, go to any shelter. It doesn't have to be here, but if you would like to help us here, that we are very appreciate. Yeah, and uh, yeah, help by spread the word. Go to adopt, don't shop. No demand, no supply. So stop ending the puppy farm. Yeah, and uh, also, as you can see, before we have only one run for a small dog run, but now it's getting bigger and bigger, so now we have two small dog runs. As I said, many, many of them cannot be adopted because, the, you know, of the, of the health problem. Yeah, and uh, so then the, also we have a puppy run over here, and now ho hopefully we see the puppy somewhere. Yeah, and uh, for the puppy here, we at the moment we cannot see them because the the heat, you know, is too hot. So they keep all the puppy inside. So the puppy they will stay here for the certain time. Most of the puppy will get adopted by the local. But international, if they would like to have a puppy, they can adopt it as well. But uh, minimum six months above. Yeah. Okay. So and. So the so now the I would like to uh, pass the microphone to back to Owen so that he can continue the rest. So Hello again. Very much for watching. Hello again, everyone. I'm going to show you. If you follow me this way quickly, we'll get out of these guys' way. I'm going to show you the rest of the the sanctuary area that you wouldn't usually see on a visitor tour. Um, you'll only really see if you've been a volunteer here before. So. Firstly, what I'm going to talk about 
it, I didn't briefly go over it earlier, is the cat hospital. So we have recently just built a cat hospital also. So as we've seen the dog hospital, we do also have the cat hospital. Um, it's a brand new building. Uh, in there we can facilitate around 150 cats with two different wards, one infectious and one non-infectious, meaning we can separate the diseased cats to stop the spread of their, their diseases like parvo and things. Um, so that means that we can give the cats just as good as care as we could the dogs. Of course, putting them together is just not going to work out. So we needed their own building, and it's only fair that the cats receive the same care as the dogs. Now, as we walk down here, uh, the first run we're going to come to, it's slightly different to the rest of the run. So like I say, this is a sanctuary area, so we do have different types of dogs living in this area. So this first run that you're looking at now is called the G-runs. Now, inside the G-runs consist of dogs that live in kennels on their own. Um, for one reason or another, they don't like to live with other dogs. They don't get on with other dogs, not necessarily because they're aggressive, it's just sometimes a little bit too much pressure for them inside the main runs with 30 dogs. So as we can probably understand living with too many people, same as the dogs, it becomes a little bit too much sometimes. So the, these dogs have their, their own special kennels so we can uh, work with them a bit better and their behavior and the behavior team can work with them. Now, please remember, these dogs are still up for adoption as all of the dogs at the shelter still are. We are still running adoptions. We are, the adoptions team is still running and still working. It generally takes two to three months for a dog to go from here to Europe, somewhere like Europe or around, anywhere around the world. So we are still running interviews. We are still running the processes for adoption. So please, 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 if you are interested in adopting, please get in contact with us um, and we can still sort out your adoptions for the future when all of this um, COVID pandemic stuff has finished. Uh, we're going to take a walk down and show you some more of the enrichment areas. As we walk down, these, this end of the sanctuary, there's a lot, like I say, a lot of different dogs that live here. We have a lot of older dogs that live in this side. In consisting of the older dogs, we have a lot of our sponsor dogs. So you may have heard about the sponsor program, certainly for the cats, but we also have a sponsor program for the dogs. This consists of a group of dogs that are medically or behaviorally challenged, which means that they, they're not necessarily going to find homes very quickly. Um, so we put them onto the sponsor list where you guys can sponsor them for a reoccurring monthly donation and this can support the shelter to continue what we're doing. The money doesn't go directly to that specific dog, but it does go to the whole shelter and all of the dogs and cats here to enable us to do what we are doing. We're just going to walk around to some of the enrichment areas. Um, we just walked down one of the pathways that is again one of our walkways for the volunteers and their dogs. We need to have this space. It's really important that we have this nice open space for the dogs. Um, like I said, there's around 500 dogs that need to be getting out and walked ideally every day. So we need the space when we sometimes we have up to 50 volunteers. There needs to be the space for these people to get around with these dogs. So we have big open areas like this. Um, so there you can see we've got some of our staff walking the dogs just to help getting the dogs out. Now we don't have the volunteers here. Um, the staff are jumping in just to help us out. So we've got Kungan over there walking one of the small dogs. So this is one of the areas that we use to walk around. And at the back there, you can see we've got the big caged off areas. These are the off lead areas. This is where we can bring the dogs and let them have some little, a little bit of time off lead, encourage them to play with toys, or just let them enjoy 10, 15 minutes on their own off lead with no restrictions and no pressure of the run. So this is that's this side of the, the sanctuary. Like I say, most of you guys may not have seen this. If you've only ever visited, visited us or if you've never visited before, the volunteers will have definitely seen this area. Um, so just to finish up, I would just want to like to remind everyone that we are run by donations. During this time in the world, yes, it's very difficult for everyone, but we are still struggling. With no dogs leaving, we still have just as many dogs coming in. This means that these dogs need taken care of and there's we're taking up more space for other dogs. So please, please, please continue to support us. Please get onto the sponsorship program and sponsor a dog. Please follow our stuff. Please share it. Please like, please comment. Um, please go soy dog crazy on us. So thank you very much for watching the, the live tour. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure if you have any questions, you can ask in the comments below and the, the marketing team will get back to you guys with any more answers you may need. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you stay safe during these times and come and visit us when you are next available.